Ladies and gentlemen, now we proceed to our next speaker that will be Dr. Valeria Martano, San Egidio Community from Italy. Please welcome Dr. Valeria Martano. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Sahabat Sahabat Turkasi. It's an honor to take the floor at this summit that gathers in the frame of the G20 representatives of world religions, scholars, activists, to give voice to the concerns and the hopes of many each one of us according with our own traditions. And it's particularly meaningful that this summit is hosted by Indonesia, a nation that has placed Bineka Tungal Ika, unity in diversity of faiths and cultures, as the core of its identity, a model of the civil coexistence. We stand in a dramatic historical passage in the midst of what has been defined as a polycrisis synthesized by three C, COVID, conflicts, climate. We are facing great challenges. The multiplication of conflicts in various regions of the world and recently in the heart of Europe in Ukraine with the threat of a nuclear escalation, the disruption of ecosystems, a result of the reckless exploitation of the resources of the mother herd, which generates not only poverty, but also migrations, human trafficking, the onset of diseases and pandemics. What can religion say and do in the face of this polymorphic crisis. We are aware that religions do not have any political or economic power. They yet have an enormous potential for pacification. Actually, to borrow the words of an Anglican theologian, Miroslav Wolf, that they are the original globalizers as they profess universal values and believe in a single human family. Actually, religions are not separate worlds from each other and from reality, but we are living organisms deeply connected with the pains, expectation, and anxieties of humanity. This makes us, as a great Catholic Pope, Paul VI, said, speaking for the first time at the United Nations Assembly in 1965, we are experts in humanity. Yes, we, men and women of faith, are experts in humanity. Compassion and mercy that are in the heart of every believer, whatever religion he or she may profess, make us challenged by poverty by the suffering of the victims of wars or persecutions, as we heard recently from the Nigerian bishop, from migrants, from prisoners. Their desperate cries claim peace. In 1968, 1986, sorry, Pope John Paul II, in the first meeting among religious representatives gathered by a Catholic Pope in Assisi, spoke of peace as a building site open to all, inviting not only specialists, but all men and women to take part in it. The community of Sant'Egidio, which I represent here, 
Since that moment has multiplied its commitment at a global level to promote the so-called spirit of Assisi, our spiritual pillars, which can be summarized as a prayer, poor, and peace, constitute an inclusive platform for its implementation. On this path, since 1990, Sant'Egidio has established the privileged link with Indonesia. The late Abdurrahman Wahid Guzdur, which I consider my mentor and guide, who defined himself a Gandhian Muslim, a man of peace and dialogue, embodied in so those years the hope of a democratic and pluralistic Indonesia, inclusive in its diversity. In the wake of Gusdur, Indonesia has taken up the challenge of building itself as a pluralistic society. And Sant'Egidio, thanks to the deep bond established with him, has developed over the years an intense collaboration with the Greek Muslims Association that represented the backbone of Indonesian Islam, Nahdlatul Ulama, and Muhammadiyya. Thank you. With whom we have made agreements that have produced concrete collaboration at a national and international level. It's not possible in this contest to recall all the stages of this collaboration. I only want to mention the latest. Last June in Rome, Pahiaya Hokil Stakuf, chairman, general chairman of NU, and uh, the president of Sant'Egidio has renewed an MOU that formalizes the long-standing collaboration of the two institutions on issues of interreligious dialogue, humanitarian action, and promotion of peace. The MOU starts a common commitment, I quote, to cooperate both at the basic level and at the macro level to develop and implement strategies to facilitate conflict resolutions, reconciliation, and peace particularly in regions where religion teachings and identities are being weaponized to foster communal hatred, supremacy, and violence. And it foresees common action, particularly in the Middle East and in Africa, in Nigeria especially. In conclusion, today religions are much closer than used to be. Barriers of mistrust rooted in history have been broken down, and cooperation between believers of different faiths is perhaps the greatest novelty of this century. A clear example is given by the document on human fraternity signed by Pope Francis and the Grand Imam Al Tayeb in Abu Dhabi in 2019. In the, if the path taken so far has led us to understand the importance of shared values for the de-weaponization of identities and for the progress of our civilizations, I believe that today it's the time for a further step, for a commitment to strengthen multilateral cooperation platforms at regional and global level to imagine and implement concrete ways of cooperation in the field of peacekeeping, struggle against poverty, I finish, sake of the planet. May our shared values develop into a shared commitment in shared actions in a concrete practice of cooperation for the world peace. Thank you, Trima Kasi. Grazie mille, Dr. Valeria Martano.